In this video, we're taking our first look at AMD's new B650 chipset via the MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. Coming in at £380 in the UK, this motherboard in particular is certainly not the value successor to B550 that many users may have expected. With that said though, there are a host of truly high-end features, including a 16 plus 2 plus 1 VRM with 80 amp power stages, quadruple M.2 slots, and dual high-speed networking connections. So let's take a closer look at this premium B650 offering from MSI. Starting out, it's important for us to highlight the difference between AMD's AM5 chipset options. X670 is the premium offering and B650 is the current entry point to the AM5 platform that aims for a more mainstream audience. Both X670 and B650 come in E and non-E forms and of course these differentiate by E having support for PCIe Gen 5 on the graphics and storage whereas non-E is typically Gen 5 just on the storage not the graphics. AMD has made it perfectly clear that there's no difference between the X or B series chipsets when it comes to CPU or memory induced performance as was the case with AM4. But the key difference comes in terms of the quantity of features offered for the B series versus the X series. Technically X670 is actually a dual chip chipset to allow it to offer more features and connectivity than single chip B650. B650 halves the number of USB 2 and 10 gigabits per second ports supported by default. There's also just the single 20 gigabits per second USB link compared to X670's potential for two. General purpose PCIe 4 lanes are cut from 12 to eight on B650. You'll probably notice that this is the only cohort of connectivity that isn't halved. And I'd wager that is because some of those PCIe Gen 4 lanes are reserved for the chiplet to chiplet communication on X670, which of course, isn't a problem with single chip B650. And then finally, the allowance for an added slice of motherboard configurable PCIe 3 or SATA 6 gigabits per second IO is sliced in half for B650. In essence, you don't really lose all that much useful IO for B650 as far as a uh, non-extreme, non-workstation, non-storage crazy user goes. The key downside is that you're likely to miss out on front panel 20 gigabits per second USB type C if motherboard vendors choose to stick the one port on the rear IO instead or vice versa. So yeah, that's a summary of B650 versus X670. Clearly, if they're the same price, you probably want to go X670, but there's more to it than that because the motherboards have different features from their vendors. So let's take a look at this premium B650 non-E offering. Appearance-wise, the £380 ATX MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi is styled very well, in my opinion. The main colouring is largely dark black, but there are sprinkles of colour via MSI's logos and branding. One really cool design decision is the inclusion of ports, bandwidth and connectivity on the chipset heatsink. Functionally, I'd argue this piece of styling is very good. I really do like it. Regarding heat sinks, MSI has clearly gone for the big and beefy approach. A large slab of metal covers the B650 chipset, and this also acts as the hub for some of the M.2 metal strips to be screwed into. You get an individual strip cooler for the uppermost M.2 SSD slot with thermal pads on both sides. I like this design because it is toolless through and through. As is now common, the SSD can be secured via a toolless latch but the heatsink itself can also be removed by pushing a mechanism to free and pop it out of place. That's really good. The VRM heatsinks are two incredibly large slabs of metal that will aim to cool via their sheer size and heat pipe link between one another. To be perfectly honest, MSI doesn't make the best effort to increase surface area via fins, but there is size to compensate for that. These should be absolutely stellar though, particularly with some airflow nearby. And a sizable rear IO cover sits atop the ports and blends into the VRM heatsink. The B650 Carbon Wi-Fi uses a six layer, two ounce copper PCB and uses dual eight pin connections to feed a Ryzen 7000 CPU. The primary power delivery system is built around a 16 plus two plus one stage VRM and this is using monolithic power systems MPS hardware. 
The specific hardware is an MPS2123 slash MP2857 PWM controller, and there are MPS2206 slash MP87670 DRMOS power stages that are 80 amp rated. This is a proficient power delivery setup from a hardware perspective. The primary PCIe X16 slot is steel reinforced for graphics card usage, whereas the other full length slot runs at Gen 4 by 4 bandwidth. We know single GPU is the go-to these days, and that's probably a good thing on this motherboard, because as soon as you put something like a 4 slot plus RTX 4000 series, if you're going for one of those big beasts, as soon as you chuck that in this motherboard, you're basically covering the other full length slot, so you're down to just the bottom PCIe 3 slot that's fed by the chipset. One clear missing feature is any form of quick or easy release button or latch for the primary graphics card slot. There's no button over here, there's no extended tab. This is generally a problem given the proximity of the PCIe slot tab to the large M.2 cooling plate. And I have to be honest, I'm pretty disappointed by MSI's lack of this feature on a 380 pound motherboard. Regarding M.2 connections, that top slot runs at PCIe Gen 5 by 4 bandwidth direct from the CPU. There are two more CPU fed M.2 slots running at PCIe Gen 4 by 4 bandwidth, and the fourth M.2 is PCIe Gen 4 by 4 from the B650 chipset. Onboard connectivity is obviously an area where B650 comes in light versus the X670 chipset, but MSI still offers a host of features here. You get six SATA ports, which I think is sensible for this market segment, particularly with good distribution around the board. Not so sensible in my opinion though, is just the single five gigabits per second USB header. There are many cases or other solutions that will require more than one of these. The front panel internal USB type C connection runs at 10 gigabits per second speed. So it's not the high speed port and that's because the 20 gigabits type C connection is on the rear IO instead. Seven total fan headers is absolutely superb, particularly with MSI's really good distribution around the motherboard. And then we get three addressable RGB headers alongside one of the old standard RGB headers. You also get some debug LEDs up near the 24 pin and particularly being a new platform, this is really useful for troubleshooting with memory or something when you're posting. There are no onboard buttons though, which is probably fine for this board's audience being B650, but it is highly priced, so yeah. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And with regards to onboard audio, that runs from a Realtek ALC4080 codec. The rear I.O. is very hefty with regards to USB count. You've got nine total Type-A connections, seven of which run 10 gigabits per second, and the other two are legacy USB 2.0 for backup purposes, which I'm absolutely fine with. The single USB Type-C port is indeed the 20 gigabits per second rated one. Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 is delivered by the AMD branded Wi-Fi chipset, while 2.5 gigabit Ethernet is delivered by a Realtek controller. MSI provides the full complement of audio connections in addition to full-size DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.1, and there are sizable BIOS flash and clear CMOS buttons on the rear I.O., which are two features I really like to see, and yep, they've got a glorious, glorious click to them. You know, I like that. So I think that covers it for the hands-on overview of the MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. Let's jump into some of the closer look testing from a software perspective and a performance perspective. MSI's tried and tested UEFI design is found on the B650 Carbon Wi-Fi. There's the conventional overview page that delivers most information average users would want. This section is quick and easy for viewing current operations and making basic changes. But jumping into the advanced section opens up a host of user tweakable options. Notable here are the SSD secure arrays facility, which can be helpful when selling or fixing your SSD. Plus, there's a good amount of control over the integrated GPU configuration. Fan control through MSI hardware monitor is very strong. This is handled using a four point curve system for smart control mode, or just a single voltage or PWM duty cycle for static non-smart speed. This four point mode is good because the maximum fan speed can be set at a true zero to 100% range, which is excellent if your cooler can do zero RPM mode on its fans, or if you feel it is too loud at 100% speed. Plus, you don't have lower or upper temperature limits. That is particularly useful for Ryzen 7000 and its 95 degrees Celsius running mode. 
There are plenty of overclocking options for manual tuning users. If you want to do adaptive core ratio overclocking and split it at CCD level, that's possible. And voltage control options are strong, though MSI's load line calibration settings need an explanation rather than a great, big and helpful list. As already noted, overclocking via the new methods are plausible. For example, you can go through with a bunch of precision boost overdrive tweaks in AMD's usual format, or you can opt for your own determined PPT allowance to the processor. Or given the discussions over the past few days since launch, you can set a temperature target for your processor to run at, rather than a power-driven metric. It's just a shame that there is no clear and concise eco mode for the CPU via the UEFI. I would have preferred a 105 watt TDP and 65 watt TDP option to be clearly included, particularly as these TDP driven eco modes are consistent across CPUs. I like MSI's UEFI overall. It is functionally strong and easy to navigate for the core features that you actually want to use. With that said, it does get a little bit confusing when you're jumping into some of those more nuanced and specific features, particularly when you're going through all of the subcategories, some of which seem to be repeated in different guises, but functionally, is perfectly fine. Our AM5 platform test system is built around the brand new Ryzen 9 7950X flagship processor. Memory comes in the form of a 32 gigabyte kit from G-Skill and this is running 6000 megahertz CL30 with Expo configuration. For cooling the power hungry Ryzen chip we've got a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler from Deepcool. Graphics horsepower comes in the form of the absolutely beast of a card that's the sapphire radeon rx 6950 xt nitro plus pure edition and then clean juice is delivered to our test system via a seasonic prime 1.6 kilowatt power supply we use the latest bios at the time of testing which is early october so this is just the stock bios available on msi's website as anybody can download and if you want more details on our test procedure comparison hardware all of that information, then make sure you check out the main KitGuru written page on the website. Let's jump into the, some of the test results. Computational performance from the MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi closely resembles that of the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. This is a positive for the cheaper B650 board and serves to validate AMD's claims that there is no inherent CPU-related performance difference between the chipsets. Focusing on memory, MSI's B650 offering is very slightly behind the ADA bandwidth of Gigabyte's more expensive AM5 solution, but there really isn't much in it for any of the memory tests with our 6000 MHz CL30 G-Skill Expo DDR5 kit, latency included. If you care about 3 d Max tests, you're likely going to be opting for a higher-end benchmarking caliber motherboard anyway. The performance differences here are slim and inconsequential to most general users. In terms of actual gaming, the MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi was consistently a few frames per second slower than the X670E reference board in Borderlands 3. Performance was neck and neck in F1 2020 though, and Watch Dogs Legion was also roughly similar when factoring in accuracy margins. There's no issues with the performance from MSI's CPU-fed M.2 slot. The cooling capability of the sizable metal heatsink seemed good too. Hopefully it won't be too long before PCIe Gen 5 SSDs are available for us to do some proper AM5 SSD speed testing. Out of the box, MSI's B650 Carbon Wi-Fi has absolutely no problem running the power-hungry Ryzen 9 7950X processor at its 230-watt package power allocation. Of course, the 95 degrees Celsius temperature target is generally hit quickly, so the actual power delivered ramps down pretty quickly too. But our chips still run at 5.1 GHz all-core on this MSI B650 board, which is roughly the same as the premium X670E GB option we also tested. Manual overclocking is not really a particularly effective way to run the new Ryzen 7000 series processors, or so is the consensus. And that's because AMD's Precision Boost 2 algorithm basically ekes out all the performance you'd want at stock conditions. So overclocking, we have to look for a different procedure. So because MSI's motherboard doesn't include any specific eco mode or any clear eco mode settings within the UEFI, we actually tested the Ryzen Master software-based eco mode to run the chip at 65 watts TDP. Of course, reducing the chip down to 88 watts of delivered package power resulted in an all-core clock speed of roughly 3.9 to 4 gigahertz, and unsurprisingly, the motherboard handled this without hassle. Another area of interest based on the feedback in our previous videos is running the motherboard and the processor with a temperature target profile. And this is just because a lot of people don't really like seeing that 95 degrees Celsius running temperature for Ryzen 7000, even though AMD has confirmed this absolutely fine. 
and that's perfectly reasonable, it's user preference. We selected 85 degrees Celsius temperature target in the UEFI, and this resulted in the processor running at a little over 5 gigahertz on average. That was roughly 0.1 gigahertz drop versus the stock 95 degrees Celsius temperature mode, but with the benefit of lower thermals, if that's what you're aiming for. Judging by the performance numbers, the reduced temperature target running mode is highly efficient at maintaining much of the Cinebench performance whilst reducing operating thermals to a level that some people may be more comfortable seeing. But that's not to say that 95 degrees Celsius running mode is an issue for Ryzen 7000 whatsoever. And that's particularly true with MSI's really proficient fan speed control system within the UEFI. Power looks to be an area where MSI's B650 carbon Wi-Fi shows some slight weaknesses versus the much more expensive X670E reference board and its beefier VRM configuration. The MSI offering actually pushes less power to our Ryzen 9 7950X package. This is good given that a similar all-core frequency was maintained. However, the wall power draw was higher for MSI despite less power going through to the CPU. So the implication here is that MSI's VRM is slightly more stressed and therefore operating less efficiently compared to the higher end gigabyte board. But that's not really an issue for this cheaper board versus the performant gigabyte reference sample. VRM cooling performance from the MSI B650 carbon Wi-Fi is very good. Shifting more than 200 watts of power through to the CPU, the 16 plus 2 plus 1 stage power delivery solution still manages to keep MOSFET temperatures well in check. The nearby PCB temperatures that we recorded were absolutely fine too, so clearly MSI's chosen components and 6 layer quality PCB are working well. Even the demanding 30 minute load test was fine from a VRM cooling perspective. Those large blocks of heat pipe connected metal atop the power stages are doing their job competently. The MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi is a well-designed motherboard that gives us a glimpse at what premium B650 will look like. Sporting a highly overbuilt power delivery solution with ample cooling, we had no issues pushing the power-hungry Ryzen 9 7950X on this mainstream chipset motherboard. The feature set is strong, ample high-speed networking connectivity, quad M.2 connections and six SATA ports should suffice for most people. One downside, however, is the single USB 20 gigabits per second port is deployed in Type-C on the rear. So the fact that there's only one there is disappointing because if you've got a chassis with front panel 20 gigabits per second USB-C at an hour in the future, yeah, you're out of luck. And I know that's a B650 issue because as a chipset, it's limited to a single port. But this board's price tag is £380. It's firmly in X670 price territory. And X670 as a chipset offers two of the super speed 20 gigabits per second ports. Fan control abilities within MSI's UFI are superb. Yeah, let's be honest, the graphics and the design of the interface, it feels pretty old and clunky at this point. The rendering is low resolution and yeah, it doesn't look particularly fresh or modern. But as far as functionality goes, it's good. And that's particularly true when focusing on the functionality of the four point fan curve system with multiple temperature sources and a proper speed curve range. Like we already highlighted, this is particularly relevant with the whole 95 degrees Celsius Ryzen 7000 operating temperature because you are free to tune your CPU cooler and chassis fans away from their loud full speed values if you so desire. In isolation, there's absolutely no doubt that the MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi is a premium motherboard that ticks many, many boxes. But I have to be honest in saying that I also feel it's a bit of a tough sell in many respects. A £380 asking price for B650, AMD's entry point to the AM5 platform currently, that's just too much. This is higher than the current price of all of the X670 motherboards available on Overclockers UK. And the X670 chipset offers far greater connectivity. Plus this motherboard's price tag is a difficult sell from a non-E motherboard offering, particularly because X670E motherboards with PCIe Gen 5 graphics support currently ship for below £400. So that's another factor to consider. Let's be clear, the MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi certainly has a lot going for it. The design is smart, build quality and component choice is very good and the fan control system through MSI's UEFI is superb. But at £380 in the UK, this is going to be a tough sell as a B650 offering that costs more than some of the X670E flagship chipset alternatives. To be perfectly blunt, we like this motherboard from MSI, but we're more interested in some of the sensibly priced B-series chipset offerings, so stay tuned for those. I've been Luke for Kick Group. Thank you for watching our video review of the MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. 
Do you like the feature set, the performance? Are you happy that you get to save a bit of money perhaps because it's got that cheaper chipset on there? Or would you just go for X670 or maybe even X670E at this price point? Let us know. As always, if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Make sure you check out the written page on the Kickery website. There's more information there and it really supports us too. And as always, interact with us on Discord, uh, Twitter, whatever social media you fancy using. Check out our Patreon page and keep tuned for the next video that we come out with. Thank you.